Hey everyone, today I'm sitting with Rachel. Rachel is a graduate from the University of Waterloo in Canada, and then she spent nine years as her first job out of college, and she grew from entry-level engineer to the director of engineering at Yelp. And now, she is the head of search engineering here at Airbnb. So Rachel, thanks for being here. And one of the things we talked about earlier, you've noticed from the many engineers that you've mentored in your career, there are some common mistakes in mindset that people have, engineers have, as they try and grow in their career. So I'd love for you to share what some of those are. Yeah, of course. I always love uh, what not to do advice more than what to do <laughs> advice. Uh, so the number one thing not to do is don't work too hard all the time. Of course, there are times when the job needs you to work very hard when you have a deadline, when you have a launch, when you have like very super high priority project. Uh, but keep in mind that in in order to learn, to grow, and to level up, you actually need some time and energy to think, to reflect. And if you're using 120% of your energy all the time, you actually are not having that space, leaving that space for you to grow to the next level. So I'll, my rule is like the 2080 rule. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you heard of it, it's like 20% of the work you do decides the 80% of the result or impact. Oh. So I like to save 20% of my energy, my time to invest in myself, to either learn a skill or to reflect or to do things smarter so that I don't go on autopilot and fill up my time with all the work that's right in front of me, but instead save some time for that deep work, deep thinking to help me grow. I've had this happen. I'm working on a bug and only when I sleep on it or I go for a walk for like half an hour, then it or comes shower. to me. Or shower. Or yeah. shower, exactly. Then, okay, now I figured it out, right? That sounds like kind of similar on a maybe longer time horizon. It's important to have some of that gap or some of that break. Exactly. Sometimes pushing harder is just not going to get you yeah. what you want to do. Uh, and the second one of what not to do or what not to say is never say, oh, I feel like I'm not learning enough at my current job to a manager. From a manager's perspective, I hate when people say it. Mm -hmm. At any job, there's always things to learn. And when you say it, it feels like someone who is very inexperienced and very entitled, who expects you know, a perfect curriculum <laughs> of job opportunities that can help you grow on the silver platter. That's just not how it works. You're hired to do your job, not to learn uh, as as an engineer, but it does not mean you shouldn't learn, but instead you should take this learning in your own hands, you know, figure out what you want to learn, have a learning agenda for yourself. Um, it doesn't need to be always through, you know, a new language or a new framework. It can also be soft skills, leadership, communication through mistakes and reflection. By all means, tell your manager what you want to learn. Give him your, or give them <laughs> your learning agenda, uh, but don't ask that from them because then you put yourself in a passive, not a proactive yeah. position for learning. You know, Alex and I, as part of Tara, we used to have talked to so many engineers, and I think one of the things that we've noticed is almost a, a, a like a victim mentality of like I'm being acted upon. Mm -hmm. I'm this passive participant. My manager should give me stuff. My tech lead should give me stuff. But I think when you break out of that and say, I'm actively in control of my own career, you have a lot more agency and you feel more empowered to, to actually grow and get promoted. And, and that change of mindset is huge. Yeah, absolutely. But if they're here watching this video, maybe they are already in yes, a very good place. Good <laughs> <laughs> yes. So the third thing to avoid doing is to put too much focus on the score and not focusing on the game. What that means is, focusing too much on the titles, on the levels, and instead of what you are doing at work yourself. So this comes from a famous NFL coach, a scorecard would take care of itself. Uh, but I think in this setting, keep in mind that your job title or your level does not mean growth, does not equal to the growth that you're getting as a person, as an engineer, or as a leader. So differentiate these things. It can be it's simply a, a external validation and something invented for big companies to, you know, scale themselves and to have like a relatively 
maintainable way、uh, to evaluate their employees. It's not designed for you to grow、uh, as an individual contributor. So,、uh, I, I would really suggest focus more on the job you're doing. Is it meaningful work? Do you feel fulfilled from that work? If not, what can you do to change that fact、uh, and put in the work?、Uh, focus on the game and believe that scorecard. If you're smart, should be able to take care of itself. Yeah, and I feel like many companies actually even make that somewhat explicit, where they say that promotions are trailing.、Mm -hmm. You should be acting at the next level for three, six months, a year even before you get the promotion.、Yeah. I mean, I find that kind of frustrating as an engineer、mm -hmm. um, because. It felt like、okay, I had to be doing the job of a higher level before I even got the compensation and recognition、yeah. of that. But it sounds like what you're saying is, try as much as possible not to be overly influenced by、yeah. title or the latter. Don't get me wrong, though. I would get very frustrated if I see someone who maybe not as capable as me get promoted over me. Like it is human nature when there's a ladder we want to climb, <laughs> but that's also how we get so caught up and we use our energy to be so frustrated in the levels, the promotion, overanalyzing every little details. Those energy is better used to do the work to actually do the best work you can do, and often those will be the career accelerators for you. I'm curious. How do you communicate to your manager that climbing the ladder is important, and there's no shame in that, right? Like people want to get promoted, they want to get paid more, and that's a natural thing、mm -hmm. for all of us to want. So, how do you communicate that to your leadership team while also communicating that you're focused on the game and not the score? Like, is there a way that someone on your team can have that conversation, and you still say, okay, that's like a very Mature way of handling that. Yeah, I think so. By all means, don't be shy about saying your ambition. So at Yao Pao, I got my dream job. Actually, is I wrote down dream roles for me that those either exist or didn't exist、uh, in the company, and I shared it with my mentor. I shared it with my manager. Who said these are not short-term things, not not the next level I want to go to, but something I eventually want to be have a chance. If there is opportunity, if you think I'm ready、uh, at that time,、uh, I would love to explore these directions. So they keep those in mind.、Uh, so then, when they see a similar problem that needs solving <laughs> or that's relevant to them, they can hand it to me. Yeah, and they think of me. So I think that's that's a very mutually beneficial way、uh, to do this. Not to demand, hey, tell me how do I get to the next level, but to say, hey, like these are something I want to do. If you see the work that's needed in、mm. this area, let me know, and I would love to have the opportunity to help. In that、yeah. case, and I think the way you phrased it there, it sounds like is you made it from the benefit of the company. It's、yeah. not just oh, I want to get promoted. It's like,、yeah. hey, here's the work. And if it lines up with the benefit, the business impact of the company, then I'd love to have the opportunity to take over that. And it sounds like that's a very effective way to, you know, get alignment and still、yeah. have that opportunity for growth. I think people also say in negotiation and everything, think about what the other person, what the other party want、mm -hmm. in this time. In this case, it's you versus the company. And so, what is what is in for them?、Uh, you, you shouldn't ignore that part when you're trying to grow your career. Yeah. Alex and I actually have a bunch more content from Rachel. In the Taro app, so join Taro.com. I'll leave a link for that in the description. You can find a lot more of the wisdom and insight from Rachel there.